What up, YouTube? It's Baxter. Back. With another reaction. And this time we got... Hulk vs. Kratos. Now, I've been... I went to... it was I just logged in and went to the homepage and I saw... This on there. And it's got over 500,000 views and it's 20 minutes long. So, I'm... From what I see, I think it's going to be like one of those death battle things or whatever. And I see that other people have reacted to it and it looks kind of like that. So I'm going to give this a shot. Um, yeah, I don't know. From everything it looks like, it looks pretty sick. If I have to choose someone, I mean, Honestly, I think I, I'm going to have to choose Kratos on this one. He's he's a god, man. Like, And I honestly, to be brutally honest, I haven't played any of the God of War games. I've seen my friends play them. It's absolutely sick. I, um, I've seen them in... Uh, my buddy used to use them in that PlayStation All-Stars game that was like uh, Super Smash Bros, but for PlayStation he was the cheapest, the cheapest fucking guy, like, but, you, you know what, I used to use Parappa the Rappa and just kick his ass, but, anyways, whatever, um, I think I'm gonna have to go with Kratos on this one, so, let's just get to going. This episode of Arcade Mode is sponsored by Eagle Moss. Eagle Moss provides a collection of comic products, including the DC Watch Collection. It consists of five series of DC watches. Each series features movie logos, artwork, iconic comic images, and retro comic covers, such as the 1966 Batman Nice. Video. Each watch comes with an exclusive 16-page collector's magazine. Go to the link in the description box below and start your DC Watch Collection today. <laughs> And apparently this is episode 5 or something. I haven't seen any of the other ones, so... Bruce Banner was a top scientist for the military that was working on a gamma bomb. A weapon of massive destruction power. During a test of the gamma bomb... So it is kind of like Death Battle. ...a teenager by the name of Rick Jones had entered the test site. Bruce rushed to aid the young man, and though he pushed Rick to safety, he exposed himself to the rays of the bomb. The result of this exposure would transform Mild Bruce Banner into the destructive monster known as the Incredible Hulk. The Hulk has gone through many different personality transformations. I just watched the Doomsday Hulk death battle not too long ago, so I know all of this already. I'm sure everyone else knew this too. But. Banner was able to control the beast through radiation treatments, even going on to help a group called the Avengers. His control had waned though, and the Hulk continued to threaten the world. Another gamma-powered being, Doc Samson, who was also a psychiatrist, attempted to treat Banner. He successfully freed Bruce from the Hulk persona, but when the Hulk threatened to continue to destroy the world again, Bruce reformed with the Hulk, shattering his persona in the process. What emerged was the Grey Hulk, known as Mr. Fixit. This version had the intellect of Bruce Banner, but maintained the savage side as the Hulk. Doc Samson first I didn't know that. helped Banner and through hypnosis, helped him to create the Professor Hulk. This entity appeared to have the full intellect and personality of Bruce, but all the powers of the Hulk. After much inner battle, Bruce had to make a deal with all three personas, each taking turns controlling the beast. What? Recently, really? The Hulk has gone back to more of his earlier incarnation, having limited intellect and being easily angered. This Hulk became part of a scheme from S.H.I.E.L.D. to help them destroy a satellite called the God's Eye. It was a S.H.I.E.L.D. weapon that had fallen in the hands of a terrorist group, Hydra, and had the ability to replicate the strength of any enemy it faced. The Hulk succeeded, but soon was going to be betrayed by his new employers. The Illuminati, a group of superhumans including Reed Richards, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Nick Fury, who was working to protect mankind and operate behind the scenes to better the world, saw an opportunity to rid the Hulk from Earth for good. When he was picked up by a shuttle to return to Earth, he was sent into a wormhole, destined for a desolate planet. Instead, he landed on Century. Planet Sakaar and became part of the gladiatorial games held there. 
rising to great fame on the planet and succeeding time and time again, the Hulk became known as the Green Scar and had unintentionally helped to lead a revolution against the corrupt Emperor. On this planet, the Hulk reigned supreme, even being a part of a group of the planet's strongest warriors, Warbound. He had found peace, love, and people who adored him. This all ended, however, when the ship that had taken him to Sakaar exploded, killing millions, including his new wife. The resulting explosion destroyed the planet, and the Hulk hurled himself and the remnants of his Warbound into space. His target? Earth and all those he deemed responsible for the death of his loved ones. I didn't know any of this. He systematically went through and defeated all he felt responsible. Black Bolt, Iron Man, Mr. Fantastic, and the Sentry all fell before the Hulk before he finally changed back to Bruce Banner with New York torn into pieces. When one of his own warbound, the insectoid meat, turned on the Hulk, revealing that it was him who detonated the ship, Bruce Banner changed back into the Hulk, consumed... Why wasn't that Hulk in the death battle against Doomsday, Iron then? Man ...to stop him as he feared he would destroy the entire the planet. The Grey Hulk? Iron Man turned all defensive satellites on the Hulk and defeated him. With the Hulk now imprisoned, a new Red Hulk has emerged. When Bruce Banner changes to the Hulk, he becomes an unstoppable beast of near unlimited strength, power, and destruction. The Hulk's strength is probably the greatest of the Marvel Universe, with many foes falling to his thunderous attacks. For his size, the Hulk is incredibly fast and can run great distances and extreme speeds. The Hulk is also able to leap great distances, traveling for miles before bounding upwards again. The Hulk is also highly resistant to damage. Very little has been known to phase the Hulk, except those of the same power level, such as The Thing, Thor, Abomination, and few others. Even when the Hulk is damaged, he heals at an incredibly fast rate, and his endurance makes him an untiring creature capable of immense destruction. The Hulk is truly a marvel, both in his capability to defeat anyone around him with brute strength, as well as destroying all that mankind has worked so hard to create. That Hulk movie sucked balls. It was really bad. I Well, I didn't like it. Here we go. Kratos. Born in the Greek city-state of Sparta, Kratos is the demigod son of Zeus and a mortal woman named Callisto, although he would remain unaware of who his father was for most of his life. Outraged at Zeus for fathering yet another illegitimate child, Hera ordered the execution of Kratos on the day he was born. But the king of the gods took pity on the child and refused, leaving him in Sparta to be raised by his mother. Eventually. Kratos found himself a family, as well as being respected as a part of the Spartan army. But soon, his daughter was victim of a plague, and only ambrosia of the gods could save her. As luck would have it, the gods were holding a competition. Each god would choose a warrior, and the survivor who would kill the other chosen and capture the ambrosia okay. would be champion and gain glory all over Greece. Ares, the god of war chose Kratos. Once winning and saving his daughter, Kratos became a high-ranking member of the Spartan army. But a son of one of the killed contestants seeked revenge. With a bigger army, it looked like Kratos Holy was going to lose. In a desperate move to win, Kratos pledged his loyalty to Ares, who then killed the opposing army. The god of war gave his new servant the Blades of Chaos, with the mission of killing in his name. After some time, Kratos began to lose himself to bloodlust, but still, Ares did not think his follower was enough. With the task of slaughtering a village and its temple, Ares transported the family of Kratos, being in a blind rage due to his years of servitude. Of oh my gosh! It was no coincidence that Ares chose Kratos. With the dream of being gods of gods, Ares needed a man strong enough to kill Zeus, as gods could not wage war on other gods. 
and with Kratos seemingly held back by his mortal ties, Ares decided to sever them. With Kratos taking back his loyalty and a whole lot of backstory, the man eventually became the God of War. That was in PlayStation All-Stars. <laughs> Warnings ignored, family members killed again and again, godly powers gained, lost, sort of gained again, restored, lost again, killed, restored immortality, gaining godlyhood, <laughs> and then killing everyone in sight. Kratos became the sole survivor of the war that is his life. With every god being killed, the world seemed permanently in chaos. And with all these battles, Kratos had had a plethora of weapons, most famously the Blades of Chaos, but don't forget his most powerful and enduring ones, the Nemean Cestus and the Blade of Olympus. Yeah. The Nemean Cestus are a pair of large metal gauntlets, each forged to resemble a snarling lion's head. The Cestus was apparently given to its original owner, Hercules, after he slew oh. the Nemean lion as one of his twelve labors. Each gauntlet of the Nemean Cestus was made in three separate parts. The lion's head, the first ring of spikes, and then a second ring of spikes. The Cestus were forcefully taken from Hercules, and Kratos uses them to beat his half-brother to death. The Nemean Cestus is the only weapon capable of destroying Onyx, a type of rock that frequently appears <laughs> in the the Cestus even proves useful enough against the Oh my Alice, god! And, when fully upgraded, against the king of the gods himself, Zeus. The Blade of Olympus is a large golden and white sword with constant release of aura. It was created by Zeus who forged it in the heavens and the earth during the great war to bend the titans to Tartarus. This weapon was first used in Rhodes when Zeus sent it down to Kratos to help him destroy the Colossus of Rhodes. Unknown to Kratos, Zeus tricked him to draining all his godly powers into it, supposedly giving Kratos the strength to destroy all who opposed the gods. Severely weakened, Zeus finishes Kratos by stabbing him. It was used to slay Kronos and Perseus as Kratos journeyed through the underworld in Olympus, and in the final battle, it was used to kill both Zeus and Gaia. In the very end, Kratos ultimately used the blade to stab himself, thus releasing the power of hope that dwelt inside of him, as well as the power within the blade, now only being a shell of what it once was. Oh. The Ghost of Sparta, Kratos the God of War, the Infamous One, the God Slayer, the man of vicious, brutal, and bloody murders, the bringer of death, the one that killed the Ghost Look at that fat-ass Medusa! He's going to die in a fight with Isn't Medusa usually, like, a dime piece? The Incredible Hulk versus the Ghost of Sparta. And second, we're going to see who's going to die and who's going to come out victorious. So, let's find out in this episode of The Arcade Mode. Alright. Let's go. Arcade Mode. Hulk smash! 7, 6, 1400 pounds. Is that Thor? Yeah, it is. You're no god. <laughs> you have drawn your last breath. Melanie. I have dishonored Asgard. <laughs> uh. 
but he won't. He's got a sword and a shield! Asgard's gonna get destroyed, so let's send him to the middle of this, a city on Earth.
Oh my god! <laughs> Just like the death battle. He's always just stabbing him in the back. You can't hurt Hulk. We will see about that. Come on, hit me. Ooh. 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 Stop. <laughs> No way, man. Fifty-eight <laughs> percent of the time, eh? I like that. That was that was really, really, really well done. All right, I think that's it. Okay, I'm just gonna pause it there. Holy man, that was, man, the quality of that was so well done. Like that, a lot of that, that fight almost puts uh, a lot of screw attack stuff to shame. That was really well done and the music was like really good. I had a feeling Kratos was just going to take it. Like, I mean, the monsters that this guy... I mean, I know the Hulk is a, like a fucking beast, but Kratos is some taken on... I mean, like, gods. Kratos has taken on gods and killed them. He's killed Zeus. Not to take anything from Hulk, but I mean... Wow, that was so sick! Wow, okay, so... I'm going to have to go back and check out episodes 1 to 4 and see who else fought then. Because that was sick. That was episode 5. So, I mean. Nice. Nice. Well, thanks guys. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.